Welcome to Living Pianos, I'm Robert Estrin. Today we're pulling back the curtain on one of the most prestigious and controversial piano competitions in the world, the Van Cliburn International Piano Competition. While this event has crowned some of the greatest pianists of our time, it's also been the center of some serious controversy. Let's dive in. The Van Cliburn Competition held every four years in Fort Worth, Texas, has long been seen as the pinnacle of achievement for aspiring concert pianists. Winning this competition can launch a pianist into the stratosphere of classical music, but it hasn't been without its share of drama, starting with allegations of biased judging. Did you know that during the height of the Cold War, Van Cliburn himself faced political interference when he competed in the first ever Tchaikovsky competition in Russia in 1958? Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev was asked whether Clyburn should win. And after hearing how popular he had become with the Russian audiences, Khrushchev gave the go-ahead. Despite this victory, some jurors in later Van Clyburn competitions, such as in 1962, faced pressures and rumors of favoritism towards Soviet pianists like Lev Vlasenko, causing tensions within the judging panel. But controversies in piano competitions go deeper than just political influences. One of the most Famous incidents happened during the 1980 Chopin International Piano Competition when Ivo Pogorelic, a pianist with a unique and avant-garde approach, was eliminated early. This prompted renowned pianist Martha Argerich, who was serving as a judge, to walk out in protest. She called Pogorelic a genius, but his unconventional style offended some of the more conservative jurors, highlighting how competitions often favor safer, less daring interpretations. This raises a question. Do these competitions truly reward the most creative artists, or do they push forward those who conform? The level of pianists entering these competitions is incredibly high. The repertoire requirements alone assure that anyone even entering major piano competitions are on such an incredibly high level, requiring technical mastery, artistry, and endurance. One of the judges in the Chopin International competition was once overheard saying, she wouldn't even consider anyone who didn't play note perfect. This suggests that expectations are so demanding that they might stifle artistic expression. Do competitions really do justice to the art form of playing the piano? Or are they prioritizing technical perfection over unique interpretation? It doesn't stop there. Many insiders believe that political alliances and favoritism have influenced which pianists rise to the top. It's no secret that jurors often come from similar circles, a kind of closed loop of piano teachers who wield enormous power over the careers of young artists. This has led to widespread debates over the fairness and transparency of the judging process itself. Another significant aspect is that winning international piano competitions today doesn't always guarantee a sustainable career. With so many new winners emerging, it becomes challenging for one pianist to stay at the top. While competition winners often spend their time traveling and performing, they have less opportunities to practice and refine their art, making it difficult to stay competitive as younger musicians who have more time to practice rise through the ranks. Even prestigious titles may not hold the weight they once did in establishing long-term careers. So what does this mean for the integrity of piano competitions? Should we reconsider how jurors are selected? And how much of a piano success is really determined by talent versus connections or politics? The Van Cliburn competition is a legendary stage for pianists, but the controversies raise important questions. Is it time to rethink how we judge the future of classical music? Let me know the thoughts in the comments below. And as always, subscribe to Living Pianos, your online piano store, for more deep dives into the world of music. I'm Robert Estrin. See you next time.